Okay, folks, we're going to start at 7.30. Uh, we're at the Community Center in Guilford at 32 Church Street. Uh, this is a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. It is November, it is December 7th, 19, not 1941. I've heard that number so much today, it's uh, 2016. Um, I have some gibberish that I have to read for you. Uh, most of you already know this, but I'm going to go through it anyway. Uh, we want to first of all thank you all for being here tonight um, and uh, in a minute we're going to read a, a public uh, notice uh, to start the meeting. I just want to give you a little background in that um, the way we work it is we have public hearings and uh, people who are here who either are here to discuss the, the application that is before us or people who are either for or against the application get a chance to to, uh, to respond uh, and for public hearings right now we have two meetings we have a first meeting and a second meeting and then after that uh, we'll quote we we end up closing the public hearing and we end up making a decision um, in addition to us making a decision anybody that's here that feels aggrieved by our decision has a right to uh, take uh, go to Superior Court and appeal our decision uh, Anything that we decide, um, the, the notice of the decision will be in the town hall at the building department uh, the day after the, the, the meeting at, what, 9.30 in the morning? Sometime the following we get morning. There earlier than that. Huh? We get there earlier, but, you know, we have to have our coffee. Right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, good. So uh, I think I've covered it all. I'm uh, just going to say for the record that tonight um, we have here with us, um, starting over here, Peter Schultze, the videographer, Lisa Brewer, Reggie Reed's not here, I thought she was here. Okay, uh, George Crawl, Josh Hirschman, Phil Johnson, Rich Meyer, Tom Cost, Rich Wallace, and Alan Brown. And we're all, all six of us are seated tonight, so uh, we'll start the meeting with the, the public notice. Notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on December 7th, 2016 at 7.30 p.m., location being the Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, the Monocatunk Room on the second floor for the following purposes. South Central Connecticut Regional Author Water Authority, 115 Great Hill Road, Map 121, Lot 12, Zone R8, Subdivision application to cut an 80,306 square foot lot out of 476 acres. The property lot contains house septic and well, section 273-25B. Denise Shepard, 50 Howard Drive, map 32, lot 34, zone R3. <coughs> Special permit application has for an accessory apartment, section 273-19. The New Haven Sportsman application has been withdrawn. Copies of the following at preceding applications are available for inspection in the Planning and Zoning Office, Town Hall South, Guilford, Connecticut, 50 Boston Street. At this hearing, persons may attend, be heard, and written communication will be received, dated this 14th day of November, Tom Cost, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I was going to mention that just to make sure that if you were here for the New Haven Sportsman Club, you don't have to stay because it's not even going to be heard. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead with the, the first thing on the public uh, in the public hearing is a show cause hearing. And before we start, uh, I'm going to turn it over to George uh, Call for a, a couple comments. Okay, this, as you may recall, this uh, this is a proceeding that's unique uh, to us. It's the first time we've ever done this. Uh, this was a process that was recommended to us by town council when some issues were raised about a site plan application that was approved uh, town council recommended that we uh, have a show cause hearing where the interested parties could appear and make uh, their case as to why the planning and zoning commission should not rescind the site plan approval um, that uh, hearing has been advertised for this evening the applicant, uh, the, the property owner uh, affected by this uh, application, MAC Management, has, as of today, submitted an application for a zoning map amendment and also for a special permit pursuant to the issues that were raised 
by a joining property owner. And um, in lieu of that, after discussion with town council, um, town council recommended that the uh, commission consider tabling or continuing this hearing to a future date after which the applications uh, for zoning map amendment and special permit uh, have been considered. Um, I know that the council for uh, MAC management is here. She may want to address this question that I just uh, raised. And I believe the uh, joining <coughs> property owner who raised this issue in the first place, I believe he's also here. Uh, he may want to comment on this, but I think it seems to me at least, and to Chuck Andrews, totally appropriate that we put on hold the show cause hearing pending the, res the uh, resolution of these two applications that are, uh, that have been made. Okay. Um, would you like, you're representing MAC management? I am. Ms. Shansky, Thank would you, you please uh, say what you have to say? Thank you. I'd like to uh, pass in to the original and commission copies of a letter that I prepared that actually went in with the application today, but that will Mission to preview things to come. And um, Attorney Marjorie Shansky, if I didn't introduce myself appropriately for the record, good evening. <clears throat> I represent EC Management. I was contacted after the um, mutual mistake of fact had been discovered that the site plan approval from this commission was predicated on what had been presented to you, which was a parcel located in the I-2 zoning district, and it was brought to the commission's attention that indeed that was not accurate. The parcel is split zone, and the commission graciously um, continued this proceeding to this evening so that I could undertake the appropriate research to ascertain a way forward. And that research started, and I will be brief, though, certainly doesn't sound like it as I set out, does it? Um, it started with an examination of the origin of the parcel as a split zone parcel because, as I say in my letter, conventionally zone lines either run along property lines, they run on street lines, or they run through center lines of streets. But the uh, idea of a mixed zone parcel, a split zone parcel, is really evidence of something that is historical and it's sort of vestigial like the appendix. It doesn't really serve a good function under a comprehensive zoning scheme. So by starting in 1953 with the original zoning map for the town of Guilford and working my way forward with the generous help of um, Reggie Reed, and then starting with the zoning com uh, Planning and Zoning Commission's minutes in 1953 and working my way forward, uh, I determined that while there were a couple of different ways to uh, seek to rectify the regulatory disarray that we were in, is to seek to undo the split zoning of the parcel. So we have filed today an application for a map amendment to make the parcel an I-2 parcel. We have filed a special permit application to um, permit parking of the eight vehicles or the eight parking spaces within 50 feet of the zone line as adjusted and we have uh, um, submitted a revised site plan application. In this kind of um, setting, the uh, zoning map amendment needs to be considered first because the other two rely on the success of that exercise. Um, I will say this, that the public utility substation, which is the reason we're here, is a use permitted by special permit in the R5 zoning district. So one way or another, the idea, you know, there is a solution. I would say, let us suspend disbelief. There is a solution and we will bring all of the information that we think is important for the commission to make the assessment going forward. In the interim, because I understand our immediate neighbor was um, A, the person who brought forward the mistake, and uh, B, had concerns about the operation. I reached out to his attorney, Attorney Robiano, and he and I have had several telephone conversations and today we met. And I will say on behalf of myself and my client that we will continue to pursue a conversation in an effort to find a, a way to peaceful coexistence. So with that, I would respectfully request that the commission at some point determine 
when you will officially receive, and it seems to me that you're going to probably officially receive the applications filed today at the December 21st meeting, and then set a public hearing date, and we'll do all the appropriate notices, and uh, perhaps keep our proceeding this evening condensed, although it may be too late for that, <laughs> based on my own comments. Um, do you have any questions? <coughs> Anybody? Well, before we go on, do you have any objection? I'm assuming, you, can you just introduce yourself briefly? Yes, sure. And then? I'm Attorney Matthew Mugliano, okay. I represent Colin Ritz. All right. Do you have any objections to us continuing this show cause hearing until after we've received and, um, and determined the other applications that have been submitted? Uh, my client and I aren't right now aware of the exact time frames. Are involved. I think I just heard December 21st would yeah. be when the applications are first considered and then sent out for notification. Notice is sent out, or that's probably going to happen before that. So, what is the 21st going, going to be? The 21st is the next meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, right. at which point the commission will receive the application to amend the zoning map. They'll then set a public hearing date for considering that, uh, which would be. Uh, four weeks hence, which would be the uh, third Wednesday in uh, January, whatever that date is. That's when, 18. That's when the hearing would be on the zoning map amendment. If the zoning map amendment, and there would have to be, by our regulations, there has to be two hearings. So there would be a hearing on the 18th, and then there would be a subsequent hearing on the first Wednesday in February, whatever, they, whatever date that is. And then the commission could make a decision on the zoning map amendment. If they, if they were to approve the zoning map amendment, as I understand it, then the, um, the applicant would submit a site plan application pursuant to the industrial zone. Um, if that site plan application would then be considered, there would be no public hearing required for a site plan application. It would be considered within the next, probably at the next meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, which would be the third Wednesday in February. We're probably losing track of all of this, but that's the approximate time frames that we would normally work on. If the zoning map amendment is not approved, <clears throat> then the ball would be back in the court of the uh, property owner, Mac Management, and they would have to decide what they want to do. Um, and so I can't really predict what would happen after that. Um, but um, that's the likely that's the likely time frame at least to the extent we can predict it right now. So we would continue this portion of the uh, process, I guess, the uh, the show cause hearing until after, so probably until March. That's what it would seem as though the time frame would be like. So that would be the... Um, if, if I may suggest, and I don't mean to interrupt, there, the, the idea of the show cause hearing, which is um, certainly a means to have us all convene, uh, doesn't appear in your regulations, doesn't really appear in the statute, um, but here we all are, so that's a good thing. Uh, I would equate it to, or liken it to, the incidents where a cease and desist order is issued because somebody is violating something, and their remedy is both to appeal the cease and desist and to seek the zoning relief that's necessary to regularize whatever is amiss. And those can travel together. Right? You just do the affirmative relief first, and if that's successful, the other one falls by the wayside. I would also say in connection with that, that we did file all of the applications today, and that for public hearing efficiency, they could be heard at the same time. It's just that the special permit could not be decided until after the uh, MAP amendment was. So it, it may not extend quite that far in the year subject to uh, Attorney Andrus examining the process. We'll keep it as condensed time, as possible. The show cause hearing is, um, as Mrs. Shansky just mentioned, uh, Ms. Shansky, the, um, we've never had a show cause hearing before. There's, we've never done that. We don't know exactly what the time, there is apparently no prescribed time frames associated with that hearing process. Um, so uh, basically Chuck Andrus told me that on a phone conversation yesterday that we could basically continue that as long as we want to until the appears ripe to actually make a decision on whether or not the commission should revoke the site plan approval. 
Understood. So as far as an objection to moving forward on that schedule, I know my concerns um, that my clients have uh, are concerns, uh, are that it seems as though the activities on the site as they currently exist are what have presented him with the concerns he's started since July. So that's been ongoing for over four months. That activity level, the usage pattern, it continues to cause me a source of discontent for my client. And uh, to answer your question, whether we would object to this further show cause hearing uh, postponement, and so as uh, Attorney Chansky so well articulated, so the process can take effect and maybe we can actually come to a resolution across a number of these issues. We wouldn't have a problem with that. My concern, though, is that the activity on the site increase in ways that would continue to be problematic for my clients. I, they shouldn't be ongoing as they exist. Right now, we have non-conforming use on the site for the for the property in ways that affect the neighbor who's not supposed to be affected that way. And not that I have any ill will towards Attorney Shansky's client, nor does my client have any ill will towards him. It is the activity on that site that is problematic, so I want that to be clearly understood and noted on the record. So I would like to some assurance that there isn't going to be a ratcheting up, there isn't going to be 11 o'clock, 10.30 o'clock uh, at night activity on the site, as has happened recently in the last few weeks, once or twice. It might have been isolated incidents, but there could be more such isolated incidents. And we, we, it's just not, it's actually asking the town's policy vis-a-vis -vis zoning regulations to conform to what now is clearly a non-conforming use. There was a state mistake made. It doesn't fit the ambit of the planning and zoning regulations, nor does it fit the policies behind them. So those are my concerns. They might not be able to be dealt with. Attorney uh, Shansky, um, can you just address whether or not um, there will be continuing construction in, on the site between now and the time that the issue is resolved? Does your client intend to continue his process? There or? is no construction. Okay. There was no construction okay. associated. Does your <laughs> okay. Well, but, does your but, client intend to continue to utilize the site as a station? So does the gas Southern company? Connecticut yeah. Gas Company intend, intend to, continue to continue to use, to use it, it as an emergency substation? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So between now. But and I've and spoken to them okay. in some detail, and I've spoken with council, and and yeah. and we need to flesh out those details, yeah. but. The operations are in, I think they're even in this letter that I presented to you tonight. There was a one-off situation that occurred, which I thoroughly investigated. In the July approval, they, um, it was agreed among all that the driveway was going to be fully paved, that activity was underway, which included rerouting the, the gas line. And in the middle of that exercise, the gas company was called to an emergency because a telephone pole had been knocked over by a traffic accident and there had been some rupture and they needed to go do what they are stationed there to do, which was address the emergency and they came back and completed their work at the site. So it was later in that evening necessitated by an emergency to which they responded. To. When I spoke to Mr. Maselli, Joe Maselli, who is um, a person who's in charge of these operations for the gas company, he told me that the emergency operation, the part that happens outside of the 7 to 345 window, Monday through Friday, that the site is used, three times a year, roughly three times a year. So that occurred. It shouldn't occur unless there's some sort of incident and the activities should be contained to the normal Monday through Friday activities. I would make a motion to continue this. I, I would ask whether or not um, it's possible to either suspend or modify the activities or move them to the commercial portion of the property until this is resolved. Sure. Just <laughs> Carl Murray, it's 325 Long Hill Road. I'm trying to contain my emotions here. I'm so angry at what has happened. 
Um, this is not a matter of moving a line. You have regulations here that you didn't follow, and now what I'm hearing is we're going to change the rules to fit what you did. Is that what we're doing? We're continuing this so you can change the rules to, so you could do it right the second time? And now you're telling me there's a, oh, we don't know how this, pro we don't have a process. Well, you had a process. What happened to that process? And it's not, you want to move a line? I have noise, I have vibration, I have dust, and I have unsightly uh, view shed that my daughters have to put up from their bedroom. I can show you pictures, I can play video. These vehicles don't just drive in and out. They load materials into trucks. So you hear the beeping backups, you hear the diesel engines warming up, you hear them on Saturday morning, you hear them all day long. I work at home. This is a problem. This is a nuisance problem now. How long do we want to wait for you guys to do your job on this? My property value has been devalued. I got a line of sight into the sand pit from all my bedrooms. When is it going to end? Um, we are engaged in conversations, Council and myself, on behalf of our respective clients to see if we can get to a point where maybe a modification or a tamping down to some degree of some of these <coughs> offending activities can be understood between the two sides and, and moving forward. Um, we can get through the, this process of the show cause and prior to that the application for special uh, permit and so forth, um, zoning change. But I really think it's important to be able to facilitate how we're going to proceed if the two sides work together to make sure that Southern Connecticut Gas Company's activities on the site aren't over the top. And they've been at times over the top. I know it's a, it was a one-off with that late at night project recently, but the day-to-day -day Saturday mornings in the lake are difficult for my clients. And the, the physical well, proximities are pretty tight. Here. We're asking for sort of a clear outline with how you want to proceed, because you know, we are suggesting, you know, there's an application that are pending right now. Do you right. want to have a show cause hearing today? Are you objecting? She's requesting sort of a continuance. Are, are you objecting to that continuance? Or do you want to, for us to consider a show cause today? I do have a couple of questions here myself because I'm, I'm unclear. I got unclear about a couple of things. Uh, so I'm going to ask the attorneys and George. First of all, the I see I see two things happening here. One was that the lot line should never have been where it is because the standard in Guilford is that 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 we we don't have lot we don't have zone changes in the middle of a piece of property. We go to the boundary of the property, and that's where the zone change takes place. Is that correct or not? Well, that's generally the case. But, but, we, but we can have that sort of argument when the app, we're discussing the application, I mean, for, for the zone change. I'm just concerned that we're having a conversation about the zone change tonight. That wasn't noticed, and yeah. people can't be here to participate in that conversation if other people okay. want it to be. Right. We'll repeat everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, appropriate time. Okay. Yeah. So my second question, then, is this is, um, I feel sympathetic to the time that this is taking. I, I would make a suggestion that part of the reason it's taking so long is one is that this is a very specific issue and, and my question is do we really need two public hearings? And is, if, if, we, if we, in this one case, if we made an exception, could we do this with one public hearing, which would take two weeks out of the process? And secondly, would the members of this commission be willing to attend a, an, a, another meeting, a third meeting, just to get this straightened out? There's another solution. Supposing we have them cease and desist until we make a decision this way, he can have the peaceful enjoyment of his property, nice. and we can take our time having the hearing. He doesn't have to suffer. We don't have to meet on Christmas Eve. 
everything will be good. Respectfully, if you want to issue that, we're going to appeal that. We're not going to be stopped while we're appealing it. Right. So, See, so I don't so know so that that has is, utility. The problem is with that, that going back and forth, I become ever more sympathetic to the property owner who's aggrieved. He did nothing wrong, but he's suffering terribly. Well, with respect to that and to Commissioner Johnson's question, the bins are currently straddling the I-2 and the R-5 zoning district. We can move them into the I-2 zoning district because that is what is on the revised site plan that has been submitted. So if you want those moved now, my client has said he would move those now. I'm just, I'm, what I'm trying to do is find a way that kind of Understood. meets the zoning but also, you know, helps us address the homeowner until we can get this resolved. Understood. Yeah. I'm just saying that... take it a long way. However, what's proposed, the location is still fairly proximate to the back of their property. We would like to see those bins move down to where they should be by the site that's been approved. The construction site, I think one of you alluded to earlier, <coughs> it's not a construction site so much as a construction <coughs> material site. And that's another couple of hundred, 150 yards down where the other bins are located. I don't think it puts SCG out. I don't think it puts Mr. Larkin's out. It has logistical issues associated with it, and, and it was examined. So I'm just saying from an, an expedience perspective on the response to the question, can we move it into the I-2 zoning district? Yes, we can. To do more than that is really to put the cart before the horse in terms of, okay. and that's been submitted. Is there, is there not a required 35-foot buffer zone from a residential exactly. into the I-2 that would prevent it from being where you're talking about? Yes, but the point of, I mean, now this really is getting into the substance of the applications that have been submitted. We're here on the issue of show cause, which, again, I would say is not an animal that is frequently found in the jurisprudential forest, as some of the judges eloquently say in the cases. We're trying to solve the problem. We take this very seriously. The Southern Connecticut Gas Company is under requirements from Pura to have emergency services located to the eastern service area. And as you'll see, I recited in my letter, and I'll say it again for the zoning hearing, your plan of conservation and development supports this specifically. So I think respectfully that if we're on the path, let's get to the path, whether or not you can expedite the hearing, reduce it to one public hearing, whatever those uh, details are, we're with you. I think the bottom line is it appears as though the attorneys are trying to work to a, to a resolution, and if we can allow that to sort of take place, that would sort of be the best case scenario. So I think I would propose that we, uh, I would make a motion to, uh, to continue the show cause hearing until, um, until the, February 1st hearing, and then we, if, if stuff doesn't happen by then, we could have the show cause hearing at that point. I, I would respectfully ask that if it, I know it creates logistical issues, but if it's possible to move the bins to the 35 foot setback from the residential zone until this is resolved, that that would be my preference in terms of supporting this. I don't think it's a 35 foot setback under your okay. regulations, and I think that within the fenced area, that is impossible. We can move it to the place that's shown on the site plan that's been for an immediate sort of resolution. We can move it to the area that's shown on the site plan that's been submitted today. And then after that, I think the equities weigh on both sides. We have to consider what's before the commission. Sort of on the <laughs> advice of counsel too. It's not just what I'm pulling out of, out of thin air. So that would be my motion and, and you know, if we want to continue this discussion, we can. You don't have to move them. Because if, if you move them, I don't know how far you move, 50 feet. I can see the bins down in the pit now. I can see activity, the construction activity that's in the sand pit that's the, uh, that was approved for the previous permit earlier this year. It doesn't matter where you move them, I can still see them. I'm still going to hear it. There's this still going to be vibration. This 16. So I don't want to waste Mark's time moving them, things around where. This 16 and a half acre industrial zone has been there since the 60s. So this did not just crop up like 
Topsy. This is well, an established so, area. So my question is, why why can we save these bins now that we, we that this is property's been here all this time? Because they cut the trees. Yeah. No, the bins were part of the application that this commission approved in July. So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, we saw one of his men in a, just a big pickup truck lugging firewood on a Sunday, Sunday during the day. So he's had snowmobiles on Peter's property. Um, I, I think we wait till February, March, April, however long you want to drag this on due to what your council tells you. And what's going to happen is we're going to have to deal with the noise, the lights. It's terrible. My fiance is taking time off of work to be here tonight. A job she had to take so we can afford an attorney to do your job. I live in a historical home. A, a check what your development plan says about that. I'm the brand of Guilford. I bought my wedding dress to? here in Guilford. We shop local. We live here. I got a bird's eye view of a porta potty. Are you kidding me? If um, we could anticipate that we'll have some level of good faith efforts to we'll work things out over the next few weeks to a month max to relocate these bins to a place that will functionally serve everybody's best interests to the extent possible, perhaps to relocate the port of potty, which is in clear view of their kitchen and living room area. My daughter's best. This is even, despite the fact that there's an eight-foot fence there, uh, which is a which wooden view screened um, privacy oh fence. God. It doesn't matter if all these pieces of equipment, these items for a commercial property, industrial property in this case, are I didn't know in that plain view done. and proximate to the, my clients. Uh, uh, Absolutely. These violations have <laughs> nothing to do with where the zone boundary is. That's exactly right. Unfortunately, the entire. So you want to argue about that? In the meantime, I'm going to put up with the rest. Of in any event, I think council is showing good faith to work with us, and if I can be assured that we'll continue in that direction and make some remedial <coughs> measures in the meantime, I think then this process can move forward as well. So you're comfortable with this recommendation? I really don't see there's any way around it there isn't. because we can end up with a cease and desist that's appealed and then it becomes more of a court matter and becomes less practical for resolution. Okay. All right, so everyone agrees at this point. You yeah. give a yeah. second. But can, I, 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 I would just, have a second. I would just like the record to show that many of the conditions that have been complained are circumstances on the site. They are not violations. So does anybody want a second? I'll oh, second. Okay. I have other discussion. Okay. I, I, I'm not often without words, but we have failed this property owner terribly. We have failed our responsibilities of protecting the value of property and protecting their quiet enjoyment. And we're, I, I agree with, I agree with the property owner that we are changing the rules to meet what has been done. And while that may be within the letter of the law, and I certainly what, what I, rules I acknowledge have we well, what you're well, saying we're going to move. What rules we're have gonna, we changed? What's being proposed is to move the zoning line to match up to what's been built. Well, that, that should be done anyway. Well, right. Well, and we I'm also not, might not approve that, Richard. We're also benefiting the property owner because they don't have the opportunity to appeal this to Superior Court at this point. So if we weren't having this hearing, I don't know what else the property owner would be able to do. And this hearing isn't something that we typically do. So we are taking, Josh, we're taking I, I great agree. steps to try to work with the property owner. And maybe the property owner would be able to sue the town for making this mistake. I don't know. I don't know how it would be undone. But they missed their opportunity to appeal this to Superior Court. So we are trying to protect the property owner. And, but we have to do it this way. And whatever comes out of it, well, you know, that's what well, the results are. I, I, will, I will acknowledge that the lawyers before us, yourself included, look at this one way, and that's from the legal view, the legal standpoint. I, I look at it another way. My job is to protect them, and I failed them. This is, we are protecting them right now. 
Okay. Uh, like I said, I acknowledge that you guys have what's going on. You have the control. You have the words. You have the knowledge. That's great. We'll do it your way. But at the end of the day, and I'm not going to vote to support this because I feel like I have failed them. I feel like this commission has failed them. If I may, I think Commissioner Meyer is um, speaking really of what transpired back in July. And you're speaking, Commissioner Hirschman, you are speaking articulately as to where we stand today and how we move forward. We understand that. Attorney Shansky and I have been, for the last three weeks, trying to figure out the best way forward. I think we've articulated as best we can tonight under difficult circumstances, emotions are running high. But if, if I can be assured that we'll move forward with your client in a way that my client can feel as though he's being heard and sufficiently address some of his concerns, then I do think we can get to where we need to be from the next. That's point. what I've said to you all along. I know you have. And with, you know, we'll find what works for all parties. And perhaps you, you need to know and have heard that we have been on the same page for three plus weeks now. I don't know about what page you're on with that gentleman who I think is on the same page as you are. Well said. This gentleman right here has sounds like he has no interest in what you're saying. He does for all he wants to hear as long as he thinks that I got to write the checks for this. What? I have to write the checks for this. I, I don't know what we're going to do with. I, you know. And I have to go with my advice account. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're trying to protect us. You put us in this situation by, by granting a permit that even the fence, something as simple as this big giant wooden fence, it's above. He needs written consent from us. He never got it. And we have said right along, we will reduce it to six feet. We'll do it tomorrow if that's what Mr. Moritz wants. But it's a topic that we've been discussing. So this is the worst I've ever seen, bar none. Commissioner Brown, honestly, we have been, as of today, we spoke at least three or four times. We've been in constant communication. Right. And it's just, it's a tangle. It's a, it's, a, it's a ball of yarn. You pull on it a bit and it gets all over. And that's what you've been dealing with. There's no easy answers. There's no easy solutions to this. Whether or not it sounds like I'm articulating the best interest on behalf of my clients. And trust me, we've been working feverishly to find a way through this dark path. Um, and hopefully we're going to get there. I mean, that's what we're all trying to do. Including submission, and we respect that. I'm on board with Josh's motion. You're on board, Alan. Are you okay? Do you want to say anything else? So the motion is again. Well, this will be a. We'll continue the show cause hearing until February, in hopes that this matter will be resolved in the very near future between the parties and. That we don't necessarily even need to. Well, other than we still need stuff. commission action. Well, no, I'm saying that we are not going to have to have brutal arguments over. The uh, you know the next step. So that's that's what my motion is. Beginning of February. You second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed. I'm going to stay. Okay. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Please get the please work on this. All right. What? I'm going to say something. Okay, next up is Gretchen Granberry. Do we need a motion to close this portion? Of, no, we don't. No. no. Gretchen Granberry, 982 Leeds Island Road, map 12, lot 18-1, zone R5, special permit, application home, handicraft industry studio for sewing, 273-79, uh, 273-38B. This is the second hearing. No changes, still making boat cushions. Excellent. Good work. Glad you're doing it. Anybody here in the audience have anything to say? Or uh, opposed or uh, want to second her doing this? Okay, uh, hearing none, we'll close this portion of the public hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Uh, next up is Denise Shepard, 50 Howard Drive, map 32, lot 34, zone R3. 
special permit application for a, an accessory apartment. This is the first public hearing of two. There will be another one. Ms. Mann, would you go ahead and your, uh, let us know who you can identify yourself before Good evening. Okay. I'm Denise Shepard from 50 Howard Drive. And I would like to put an accessory apartment in my home. I have a split level on Howard Drive. Um, because I have a 90-year-old mother who lives with me on the weekends. And eventually she'll be living there more often. But it's three steps to get on to the second level and nine steps to get to the bedroom level. And pretty soon she won't be able to walk any of those steps. So I would have to reconfigure my whole home unless she was able to get in and out of the house on the main level without any stairs at all. Do you have any kind of diagrams or? I do. Do you want to pass them out, ma'am? Oh, they're, they're in there. It was part of my application. George, does this meet all the requirements for uh, Reggie did the checklist, yes, it meets all the requirements. There's a letter here that I'll read in the record just for right okay. now from Dennis Johnson, uh, December is dated December sixth. And Dennis Johnson is the uh, director of health in Guilford. He said that the recent enlargement of the applicant septic system to four bedroom capacity will accommodate the increased bedroom count created by the proposed um, apartment addition. It is recommended that the applicants proposed special permit for creation of an accessory apartment be approved. Did you get this letter? Yes. Okay, great. Well, this and is then there's a worksheet in here that looks as though she meets all of the requirements. And this is pretty much exactly what this regulation this is, is meant for. Are, yes, this is, this is a, usually we get people that, you know, want it for other uses, but for family, this is the exact purpose, so. If, 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 if there didn't need to be, and, and the reason why we have a second hearing is because a lot of times people do try to sneak stuff through but in this case I wish we only had a single hearing so I could say yes right now. <laughs> Thank you. I heard from three of my neighbors, three of my 11 neighbors who agreed that they had no objection and then I have another couple here that are my neighbors also. Okay. Thank you ma'am. Um, just logistically um, before the next hearing, you can just get them to write a quick letter and put it into the record. That's always very helpful. Just have to be a sure. Okay. All right. Uh, any comments around. from the audience? Okay. Nobody's here to oppose it or you want to oppose Motion to continue. continue. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of continuance? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. The last one's been withdrawn. Uh, someone moved their uh, approval. I believe someone representing the Sportsman's Club wants to sort of officially tell you that they were withdrawing. Yes. Not my honor. There's no honor. There's no honor. You're in the water. <laughs> <laughs> no honor. There is honor. I wanted to just uh, speak briefly to the application that's been withdrawn because within my letter withdrawing the application is a request that you allow me to speak with your counsel so that we can make uh, a decision about what the appropriate application to follow on is. Okay. Uh, and I explained in my letter to, to the commission that I believe that um, a site plan application is the appropriate application under the circumstances. This commission may ultimately disagree. I did have a chance to have a conversation earlier today with your planner. I think he may disagree with me. But I'd like to nail it down by speaking with your counsel so that uh, we can move forward. In house or outside? Uh, Mr. Andrews, if I may. Good. Um, can you just state your name again for the record? Sure, I'm John Corona, Lang and Corona. Are we authorized to do that? Or we're just yeah, yeah, that was wrong. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The issue is whether or not a special permit is required. Um, Reggie had determined that one was, and so an application was made, but then subsequently, Mr. Corona and his clients decided that they want to withdraw the application because they don't believe it's required and they they know that the commission is going to want to seek their counsel's opinion as to whether one is required. So Mr. Corona is basically just confirming that. Right. I, I wasn't involved uh, at the point at which the application was submitted. And I know that Reggie did in fact recommend that a special permit application um, be made. Uh, my clients did make that application. We're withdrawing, but only on the expectation that we're going to come back with either another special permit application or a site plan application, depending on what the final decision uh, is. 
Okay, and so I'd, I'd like to cut to the chase by being able to speak with Mr. Andrews and uh, get a resolution. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we need to close public hearings. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to um, approve the revised agenda. Second, please. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so. I'll, I'll make a motion. I voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for Gretchen Granberry 982 Leets uh, Island Road, Map 12, uh, Lot 18 dash 1 for Home Handicraft Studio as shown on an application dated 12, well, this is probably not right, 12 19 16. Um, maybe 11 19 16? Probably not either. One of those things. It was right before. Previously, <laughs> this application is approved based upon a finding that it conforms with the zoning code. The special permit is effective on December 16th, and upon filing with the 10 19 16 is the date of the application, and upon uh, filing with the town clerk. Second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to applications that be received. Coastal Area Management Site Plan, Joseph Gertner, uh, 20 Beach Road, Map 13, Lot 22, R4, 4086 10, Zone RS2, Coastal Area Management, to add a deck on an existing cottage, 273 91, received instead of public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Martha Buck, 280 Leeds Island Road, map 19, lot 15, zone R-1, coastal area management application, build build a new deck, freestanding 23 by 11, 273-91, uh, receive and set public so hearing. Moved. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Uh, 10 Long Hill Road, LLC, uh, 10 Long Hill Road, LLC, uh, road map 45, lot 14, Zone C2, Coastal Area Management and Site Plan, revision change for use from retail to professional offices and site improvements. 273-91, receiving set public hearing date for 1417. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we we'll move on to zoning amendments. Brainford Jewelers, uh, 2772 Boston Post Road, map 83, lot 25, ZR, Dash eight zone zoning amendment request to amend TS three zoning to resi to residential density of five. Not, not they want to try and get more on property. Zoning to residential density of five units per acre. Mm -hmm. Receive and set public hearing for twelve uh, twelve twenty one. Mm. Second. Uh, I, can't, I can't. I can't support this. All in favor. All in favor. Say aye. aye. We're not approving the yeah, zoning. I know. No. This is criminal. Let's wait until we have the public Yeah. <laughs> okay. Subdivision is next D, Sun Creek, Creek Develop Sun Creek Development, Cherry Street and North River Street, map forty seven, lot seventy seven, zone R one, subdivision three lots receive. Cherry Street and North River Street. I know where that is. That's right by your house, isn't yes. it? Yes. That's the um, so did someone move this? What are we receiving it to do? We're just receiving it, but I guess there's no date. There's no date? No, just to receive it. Okay. Um, we had a second on it, so we can receive it. I yeah. received, I said motioned it, but I didn't hear a second. Second. Someone? Second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. Other? First item. Uh, uh, get Reggie on this first item. The second one is the, uh, is, this is the, easement that was part of the plan that you approved for the metro pooch in order for the town to accept this easement it has to go to town meeting so and that requires a, an 8-24 referral which is what this is um, is there a letter that needs to be read or uh, just make a motion to yeah i think you have a motion on that motion. Okay. and a letter that's not the letter Explain to me what the uh, letter. That's the letter. Yeah, but we then. I have the letter. You want to read the letter then? Yeah, I got it. It I just says, and maintenance, maintenance agreement overlook. Joe Mazza, Coach Blackman, Tom Cost, Chairman of Planning Zoning Commission, 
Dear Tom, in accordance with Connecticut General Statute Section 8-24, I am forwarding the following request to your consideration at your May, May, 6, 4. May 4th, 2016 16. meeting. Got those kind of early. Yeah. Dude, this is dated two th December 5th, 2016. <coughs> they knew it was coming back in May. So it must be May 4th, 2017? How about December 4th, 2016? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just for the day. Mandatory referral, consider and take possible action on an acquisition of coastal, area, coastal access easement and maintenance agreement over property located on Soundview Road known as Guilford, known as Guilford Town Assessor Map 42-118-4, in accordance with the Town Charter, Section 7-7, -7, and the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approval of a special permit site plan and coastal area management site plan for Soundview Road, LLC. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. I'll, I'll read the motion. The proposed mo uh, voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a mandatory referral for the Board of Selectmen to acquire a coastal access easement and maintenance agreement over property located on Soundview Road known as Assessor Map 42 Lot 118-4 in accordance with Town Charter 7-7 -7 and the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approval of a, site, of a special permit site plan and coastal management plan for Soundview Road, LLC. Second. Second. You second it? Yeah, second. <laughs> okay. Discussion? None? The only question I have, do we... It doesn't matter to us who maintains it because it says something about maintenance agreements. Do we care? No, or it's not our business. No, no, no. So just well, yeah. if we agree. To this. No. So we have, this okay. is what the question. What does the maintenance agreement involve? Are we maintaining this? I don't know. I don't know. Like if you Should say you're know? agreeing well, to maintain we're, it, then yeah, you're we're sending I this off to the town right for a town meeting. I, I think guess. that it's will become the town will maintain it. Yes. Yeah. So to the extent that it requires it. Send, send the guy down there to mow the path. Well, yeah. I don't know how often it'll have to be mowed, if at all. Uh, but we're the ones that asked for it. We're the ones that asked to have this easement to, so that people so, can walk so down the to the market. easement is just like walking across someone else's property, right? We're not to, actually taking possession no, of it. No, it's an easement, but we, uh, we're going to maintain it. I don't think there's any real maintenance required, but... So what happens if someone falls and becomes injured? Are they suing the town or are they suing the metro coach? Probably both. Well, it'll, it'll probably be pursuant to the maintenance agreement. And yeah. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> why, why, <laughs> just that, just well, for my clarification. One thing why is. Why do we agree to maintain it? Why can't we just say there's an easement and I don't have them the, uh, agree to maintain it? The maintenance, I can't really speak to the substance of the maintenance agreement, but I do know that it's something that the town's lawyers, you know, like spend hours working on developing it. So I'm sure it protects the town to the maximum extent possible. Uh, beyond that, I can't really say much more about it. So let's say that some maintenance work needs to be done, and the Metro Pooch people say, hey, you know what, the town's on the hook for this. Let's well, get them to do it. It'll be laid out in the maintenance agreement, the work that needs to be done. Yeah. Well, we have. I mean, we, we, took we, the town we took possession of, and we paid $20 million for, what, 500 acres of Goss land. You know, people can fall down there anytime and sue the town. So that's just part of what happens. It's just I'd rather have the Goss property in all its beauty instead of the, where many. the dogs are walking. I doubt it's very many people. Well, there's actually not a small one. Season, if any. This actually, this, this easement, I think, also was required by the state of Connecticut. Yes. They, re they generally recommend that we could resist so it. Did, you know, if, they, if there were actually access to something that people really wanted to get access to, I would be all over it. But There's got to be dog stuff all over it. No, no. There, no. This, is a, this is a bark yeah. free facility. It's a bark free facility. You're right. All right, guys. I mean, most of the referrers we approve. I don't know what would happen if we didn't you approve this. Control, that's all. Yeah. yeah. All right, so anybody have any other discussion here? Okay. All in favor of the manager will say hi, thanks. Right. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to I'm going to have Richard take this over because I thought Ray was going to be here, but I'm this issue with the electrical, uh, this, uh, the panels, I'm going to recuse myself. Good work, sir. So you're, you're going to have to deal with this one. Okay, okay. sir. <laughs> This is, um, I guess, Reggie is here for. This is a Tom. So, nature of We read this in our. Yeah. Tom, are you leaving? I'm going to I'm gonna go sit. I'm not going to. I'm not leaving the room. I won't do that. I think that's right. That's right. Don't look at it. Do you want some glasses? Don't look. I won't look at it. Okay. 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 Ok
I'm going to stick in that. I'm going to go see what the score is. All right. Okay. You've got a tough crowd here tonight, Rich. You better do well. <laughs> okay. Um, I was approached by Keith Bishop. Uh, he came to a staff meeting and explained to us that they would like to put up a solar array on the farm property across the street from the Bishop's Farm Market. And what they will do in this solar array is harvest solar energy to create electricity. And this electricity will be used to power the barns and the house on the property. And then what's left, because there'll be quite a bit left, will be sold back to the power company, who will in turn, with some sort of agreement, uh, put that energy into the farm market. It won't power the entire farm market, but it will power a good percentage of it is. So I looked at the uses because he thought this could be an accessory farm use. And I looked at the uses in our regulations for agriculture. We talk about buildings and structures and farm stands, but there's nothing about harvesting electricity on a residential property to be fed to commercial property. I can't give him an answer, and so I leave it up to the commission to decide if this is a, an accessory farm use. Yes. What street is it across of? Is it across US Route 1 on that side, or is it across Long Hill? By US Route 1. I can show you a, a diagram. Do, you, do we also know what it looks like? Like, is it terrible or is it small? This is. Uh, can I can I ask a question while you're explaining too? Yes. Isn't isn't this Connecticut a net metering farm. state? Yes. So mean? if I that means if I put solar panels on my house and I generate more electricity than I can use, no, they only go to the amount that I use. I can't make any money on the deal. Well, that, that, that was, I was part of this explanation of this. They have a spe there's a special there's a special provision for farm use where in effect you can do what you said you wanted to do at your house, which is create electricity above and beyond and then sort of sell it to yourself uh, for farm purposes, agricultural so purposes. A it's a special provision of the Connecticut law. I don't know exactly what the terminology is, but it allows them to do if, what if you wouldn't be allowed to do. If that. Connecticut didn't otherwise have a law that, I guess, so is so didn't I, otherwise do this though. The the alternative would be right that all these residential homes that have these solar panels would be sort of selling back their extra energy back and making money on that. Well, I guess the question is: is the uh, is the house in the barn a residential property, yes. or is it? A, it is. Yes. It's, in a residential zone. it's across the street from the farm market. It's zoned R5. Okay. So I guess I'm still confused as to how, and help me out, well, how, how they're selling the electricity in excess. Because it's a farm. I thought it's residential. Well, they're, they're proposing to do it zone. because there's a provision in Connecticut law that allows farms to do this, uh, whereas and no one else is allowed to. So if I set up a farm. solar panels as a farm on my property, I can do it? If you had a farm. Yes. You had a farm. And then you have apparently, to apparently. I think if it, you have to apply. There's a whole. You could go on like the. You could. I think you have to have a certain amount of just acreage and uh, like do something on that acreage, and then they come out and they check it. And you can unfortunately, Reg. Um, but you're going away from the question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The question is, is this is it? Does the commission believe creation of electricity? on a residentially zoned tract of farmland to be used at a commercial retail store in a commercial zone and accessory farm use. In other words, they're gonna harvest this solar power from the sunlight, convert it into electricity. They're gonna use, if, if they were just gonna use it on the land where these collectors are, there'd be no question in my mind. But for, he's asking, that this be considered a 
farm, accessory farm use, and therefore it's, it would be okay to have some of that power go to the uh, farm market across the street. I'm a confused. If they were not using any of that power for the commercial use, right. would there be any issue? No. Okay. So if Connecticut was a state that happened to, I mean, I, this is for, I'm, I believe you, Phil, because I have no idea. But I was always under the impression that if you have solar panels and you go above the amount of your usage, you can sell it back to the, to the power company. But that doesn't happen. That's not what it is in Connecticut. Or for any states like that? Apparently. Oh. You can't do that in Connecticut. Yeah, a little bit I know about so, it. So what I'm saying is that I don't necessarily believe that there's any, and this is maybe, I'm maybe confused right now, but I don't necessarily believe that there's any added different, the panels can be there whether they give them back, whether they it's give it back to the commercial or not. The, resi the reality is all the electricity is getting dumped back into the grid anyway. So yeah. it's just a money transfer. Y yeah. So well, would you? Let me, let me, can I say something? Go ahead. <laughs> I kind of looked at this all day long and I'm trying to figure out why we have solar paddles on the farm side and not on the other side behind his, his commercial building. And I think his reasoning is, is that the property behind his bar, behind those barns up on the hill is a rock pile. It's not good for vegetation or growth so forth. So he saw a chance to put something there to profit by it. And, the, and by doing that, he wants to transfer that power. Basically, he would love to just transfer it right over to the other side. But he can't do that. He has to go through the power company. So that's what he's doing. He basically is trying to utilize the piece of property that he can't utilize on his farm now and get a benefit from putting those um, solar panels in. That's what he's trying to do. There is nothing from what I saw in here. Now, I'm new at this. <laughs> There's nothing in here that says that he can, he can or cannot do that. But I was looking at the section in the book, and there's a section where they start talking about that uh, 244 section. And it starts talking about produce and things you can do on a farm, what you can sell. So we could put a, a little piece in there that will allow them to use this piece to transfer that power well, in I our own time. He's just selling it back to the electric company anyway, right? I don't think but right now, it, the town of Guilford doesn't allow that, right? It, it doesn't say you can, it doesn't say you can't. So to kind of cover our back door, I thought maybe we would just put in a little section there that says that he can. I think, his, let me ask Reggie this one too. Are we just basically coming here, not because of the power, but because of the use and the, stru the structure itself, the, the well, panels? My question to you is, do you believe the, uh, Harvesting of solar energy to convert into electricity is a farm use, an accessory farm use. Why do we need to make that decision? Why can't we just say that these solar panels are permitted on this property? I mean, I don't know why we need to say any further. Well, because then I would, then it would never become an application to the commission. It would just be a building permit application, which if you agree that it's an accessory farm use, I could sign off on that it conforms to zoning and that's the end of the story. But let me read you, I, you all got this and you may not have had a chance to look at it. Um, but in Keith Bishop's uh, notes, he says, um, per uh, section 16-244 UE of the uh, CGS, Agricultural VNM, which stands for Virtual Net Metering Solar System, uh, was approved by Pura for agriculture purposes. So therefore, he's, he's thinking that this is an accessory farm use. I can say without a doubt, I believe that harvesting sunlight is a farm use. I mean, that's okay. just what my opinion is. I at this point. Well, then that's the end of the question. I mean, <coughs> Reggie doesn't want to, this is a substantial facility, mm -hmm. and Reggie doesn't want to sign this building permit when he applies for a building permit indicating it has zoning compliance without consulting with you first, because if somebody were to complain about this gigantic, fairly large 
solar field and say, hey, how come you approve this? She wants to be able to say, well, the commission interpreted the regulations well, to so allow let me, let me ask a question to you then. Are these solar panels considered, you know, in the property coverage area, setback requirements? So and setbacks, to, yes. They have to need setbacks, yeah. but they don't count for a lot of coverage because they're pretty slim. They have to be height requirements, right? They can't be higher than whatever, 35 feet or 45 feet. They have to meet yes. all the structural yeah. 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 on the ground. They don't yeah. It sounds like they don't meet the structural ones because they're not, well, are they, they're I mean, structures, but they're not buildings. Is, is, is there a reason why neighbors would find this offensive? Well, if you look at the uh, no, like look at it'll be over an acre of uh, solar array on the property. So, okay, so let me ask you a different question. If we say yes to this, are we saying yes to this in many other places in Guilford? If there was, if there was a 500 acre lot, it's, it's, for example, there was a 500 acre lot apples? That, 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 someone, that someone owned that was, that was cleared. We are saying that you can make that entire lot solar panels, That's and that will be saying, that will be used. That will be a, an ancillary farm use. But I don't think that we could say no to them turning that into an entire solar panel field anyway. They just won't be able to do anything with that electricity. So, so that makes no sense. I mean, you know, obviously none of us want to see bishops go away and the apple orchard become a solar field because we like the look of an apple orchard. But from, and again, I am woefully uneducated on this. He can make all the electricity in the world, but he can't sell it for a profit. Is well, that he, true? He can, I guess, under this farm, yeah. because of this no, farm. He could only use it for his own, oh, so for his his own, own property. So he's not going to be able to. And that only for agricultural purposes. He can't <coughs> use it and sell it to, you know, the gas station next door. It can only be based on the special rule that Reggie just referred to, that allows this net neutral metering or whatever it's called only in the case of agricultural uses. That's the only case under which this is allowed. Under, under which he's allowed to go greater than net metering. Yeah. And basically sell to the, to the, the power, power company that credits back to so use it for his credits on his and property the, across the street. The question about lot coverage, the parcel that the solar collectors would be on is 8.75 acres. So lot coverage would not be an issue. Can, can I join in on the sure. conversation? I had the, for the record, Brian McGlone, I had the opportunity to sit in with Reggie and George on this. The way I understood it, first of all, on, on the property where it's going to go, you were right that it's on a kind of a graded hillside that's ledge, that he can't do any kind of growing of apple trees yeah. or pears or any kind of, any normal um, fruit tree or whatever they would normally do. So he's got a parcel of land that he can't use for, I'm going to say, the traditional agricultural uses. If I'm not mistaken, there's two or three barns even on that side of the road in that area that this will feed and supply. And the house. Oh, and the house. About 20%. No, well, okay. He indicated that even the total power generated by the fields will only supply about 60% of his current need on that side of the road, coupled with the farm stand or the retail store, the commercial use. So he really isn't going to be generating any excess to sell to anybody else but himself. So it's, he said it's about 60% using feeding uh, the, the farm stand. So, I mean, he's not trying to sell it back. I mean, he profits only in that he's helping to try to lower his cost structure yeah, side, for power he's use. He's trying to lower his cost on the other side. Right. So, commercial pieces. Can you imagine a scenario why we wouldn't want to be able to sell as much as we could generate back to the power company? Wouldn't that make sense? I, and I'm going further than what he's asking for here, just philosophically. If he has no, because it, I, I mean, my answer is no. I, I don't think we should. Right. Um, in the case of safety zone over on Long Hill Road, they have a huge field up on their roof, and they are able to sell back. So I mean, you're lessening the need of the utility companies to build another power plant or burn more coal or run another nuclear plant. So I mean, it is. So they can, they it, it can is considered sell clean energy, so. 
they can sell back the overage at safety zone, but he can't because he's a farm? Uh, okay. Right, he has to use they for can't sell back. They can't sell back the overage at the yeah. safety zone. They use all that themselves on the site. Of, maybe you're right. Over the course of the year, he does. You're, I, right. I think that's clarifying. Bishops can sell back basically to themselves on another location, in this case across the street, because they're a farm. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right, George. Safety zone in a period of the year, they right. may be generating more than they need, but it just gets banked. Right. And then in another year, when it, or the other part of the year when it's not as sunny, they right. use it up. They get a credit. Okay. So, so what happens? And I, I think that he should do this. Yes, but I, I'm thinking, as these solar arrays become more effective and efficient, and they begin to generate more and more and more and more electricity it makes no sense that they wouldn't be able to generate the overage just from the standpoint that it's clean energy, they don't need to build other infrastructure, they don't need to build generating stations, and I have to wonder why there's regulations in place that you can't sell back the overage. And I know it's got nothing to do with you, and, and I'm supporting Mr. Bishop's application, but it, it makes no sense that you wouldn't be able to sell back the overage, unless, of course, the utilities had a hand in crafting the law so that there wouldn't be any competition for them. And shame on the utilities because they're standing in the way of clean energy in the state of Connecticut, which we desperately need. So I don't understand, but I definitely support Mr. Bishop. Anybody else got any So I jumped in just now. Good. Sorry, sorry okay. I got carried away. Anybody got any other questions on this? I think there, just last one. Are sure. there any regulations on the books now with respect to solar panels? I want to think about that. Yeah, that, nope. that might be something to refer to the right. committee. So, so, okay, so I've got a question for you. So where, we have a, where we have a residential where the bulk standards are 35 feet for the structure, and they're 34 feet, and they're putting some sort of solar array that exceeds the 35 foot structure. Oh, so that, our zoning code still stands for oh, that? Oh, yeah, okay. they can't. They usually don't go that high. Yeah, I but if, I guess I would throw that back out. If I have a five acre parcel of land and a house, and I, well, I'm not really into cutting my lawn. I'd rather just yeah. generate electricity. It's expensive, though. I mean, can I just lay them on it? I mean, there's but no. You, can't I mean, you don't exceed lot don't coverage. Exceed. I have lots of hot tubs or something. I don't know. I mean, we look at lot coverage and setback requirements. Mm -hmm. But that's that's it. That's I think it. That's something to be referred. Uh, a hot tub facility for that's others. Right. Right. Solar so the answer is yes. I say yes. I say yes. Accessory yes. farm use. You don't need Rich, do you want to call a vote? Or? We don't. I, do, we don't need a, you do, do we need a motion on this? or do It would probably be better if you made one. Do we have one? Josh, can I you just say just to approve what Well, what is bad. That, this harvesting of solar power is an accessory farm use. So, second. Any discussion? We've got plenty. Thank you. Thank you. Follow the process that's got to go through now. Build the permit. Yeah. I would, Richard. I would prefer to zoning just. Oh, well, we'll give should it. at some point down down the line. It's so crazy, but yeah. we'll let, when Tom comes, he can set that back. Yeah, we'll let Tom. When Tom comes back in the room, he, he can make. He can. Hey, make Tom's back. Hey, Tom. Well, somebody tell Tom to come in. He's coming to pay the bills. There he goes. <laughs> He's here. Okay, two yes. Insane Insane. Insane. Okay, uh, what's next on the agenda? We have the uh, Agricultural Society wants to add um, an event in May. The Faulkner Light Brigade race. Nice. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Someone uh, wants Mr. to. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the meeting. They seem substantially cor yeah. correct to me. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we pay the bill to Shore Publishing for $123.19. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, in as much as there's no further business before this commission, I make a motion that we close the meeting. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. See you in two weeks. Good December work, 21st. Sir. Thank you. I have, I have 310 panels on my building. And the way you get paid back for it is I get, I got, I was,